Hi, my name is Norbert Funky. I'm a time stream specialist with AWS. In today's video, I will be illustrating of how to use Amazon Time Stream and Amazon Neptune to do transactional fraud detection on AWS. But before I go into the demo, let's quickly take a look into uh, some of the scenarios that, uh, we have, that I've prepared here as an example. And this is a scenario that happens in financial transactions. So let's take a look into some of those transactions that are happening here, two different accounts. So the first account on top, what we find is that, that within a very short period of time, there were a lot of small transactions. So you can see here is this account has transactions within seven minutes with a lot of small, uh, small amount of accounts. So this might point to uh, their, to an unusual frequency of small transactions. So uh, this could potentially happen if somebody got hold of your credit card number and is now going online and uh, is using it for as many uh, transactions as possible before the credit card gets blocked. There's the lower part it shows a different pattern. So in this pattern we find is in a typical uh, um, uh, couple of weeks or so for the account number 52, there's only a small transactions of roughly about $100 going on. However, all of a sudden, uh, right here in the middle, there's a very unusual amount happening at the same account, which might uh, identify a different pattern uh, for financial uh, for support going on. So in order to do all of those micro-level detection, this is uh, where we use Amazon Timestream uh, to detect patterns within those time series. But often enough, all of those transactions on accounts might actually uh, not sitting in isolation, they might relate to each other. So from that perspective, let's now take a look into, into a broader view. So again, we have those two different transactions here, uh, like accounts here with 37 and 52. And uh, the first question we want to ask is, uh, might there be a relationship between those fraudulent accounts? And if that's the case, is is it possible that there actually might be a wider fraudulent scheme going on? And if that's the case, uh, is is it possible that maybe one of the other accounts uh, or they're in the same network might be attacked uh, attacked yet next, even if they haven't shown any fraudulent transactions so far? So in order to do all of those analysis and in a graph. Uh, this is where we use Amazon Neptune now to identify the wider impact uh, of all of those accounts there. Uh, so this is what I've built in an example. Uh, so uh, next I want to quickly talk uh, about how the architecture uh, itself looks like uh, before I'm showing the actual example. This reference architecture shows how all, all of those components work together. Uh, so we're starting from the left-hand side uh, where uh, uh, data comes from the application. So all of those transactions, transactions as a stream uh, and are being captured in an uh, uh, Amazon Kinesis data stream itself. Uh, so then the uh, transactions are further being an analyzed within uh, Amazon Kinesis. Uh, and then the adapter uh, from uh, Amazon Kinesis uh, to a time stream will now forward all of those transactions into the uh, time series database Amazon time stream. Uh, here we can further analyze uh, the data storing in the transaction table. Uh, but in order to do the uh, the fraudulent detection of the transaction itself. Uh, this is where Amazon Timestream can utilize a feature called Schedule Queries, uh, where we can build the logic of what our financial transaction fraud, uh, fraud actually should looks like. Uh, so this trans uh, this uh, Schedule Query will run uh, uh, around every five minutes or so uh, to identify are there unusual transactions happening as we have seen in the previous uh, uh, table for transaction there. Uh, all of those results are then further being uh, being stored into another table. So now we have uh, other tables within Amazon Timestream uh, that has flagged all the financial transactions with those related accounts itself. So this is how Timestream itself comes into place. Uh, but also the same uh, type of information are we now using to forward the data to Neptune. So in this case, uh, uh, there is an Amazon Lambda that's being triggered from the uh, from the Kinesis stream. Uh, that one stores the data into a graph itself. 
Uh, so here in the graph uh, can we now uh, analyze all the various uh, uh, dependencies or relationship between those uh, uh, different accounts. And uh, that information can be further being exposed uh, for further uh, uh, consumption, for example, using uh, using the uh, Amazon Athena connector itself or other ways uh, for visualization. Uh, but in this scenario, what we're also doing is we're bringing both of these data together uh, within uh, uh, an example analytics in a Jupyter notebook to uh, to uh, to uh, to take the transactions and to take the accounts uh, to find those relationships. Additionally, what's optional that can be done is uh, taking all the information and uh, connecting it to uh, visualization tools. Uh, this is not done as part of the demo, but you can basically think of any information that is stored in some of the databases in uh, in AWS. You can uh, uh, visualize using QuickSight or whatever your choice of uh, the choice of visualization tool is uh, for running reports uh, or further investigation. So with this, let's now actually see this in action. Uh, so I will be now switching to my uh, br uh, my browser, and in 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 the browser uh, we can see of how the app actually works. The solution is available here on the guidance for transaction fault detection on AWS. So the link I will provide later uh, in the uh, end of this video, so that you can try it out yourself. But you find that all about the documentation, uh, the architecture, how it works together. Uh, is all being listed here, uh, as well as if you want to try it on, uh, on your own, there is a link to uh, the sample code itself. Let me just open it up that, which gets you to uh, a GitHub repository. And within this GitHub repository, do you find all the, uh, the necessary code uh, uh, that, that you need for that. So not only the code, but also the instruction of how to work with this, uh, some overview, uh, cost and perspective, but I want to go all the way to the deployment step. So you can certainly follow all the deployment step. What this will do is it will basically uh, for you uh, copy the uh, CloudFormation template and any uh, any code and uh, uh, repository that is needed uh, to S3 so that you can uh, deploy it. So I already uh, cloned the repository there, and as you can see, also the instruction of how to work with that, you can see around there. But uh, let me just switch over to the uh, CloudFormation. Uh, so once you then deploy the CloudFormation, you can give it a name. There are certain parameters you want to set depending on uh, what account you so by looking at the details of the deployment that is happening in here, so this is the new uh, stack that I'm creating, it roughly will take uh, about uh, 40 minutes for all of those resources being uh, put into place. So you can uh, certainly look at the events and the resources. So what I'm gonna, we're going to do is I'm wait till the deployment is finished uh, and uh, then continue uh, with the video right there see that the CloudFormation stack has been successfully created. Let's take a quicker look of uh, what are all the various things that have been created. So certainly, as you can see here from the bottom, uh, there is a Kinesis stream. That's the Kinesis stream that receives all the transactions from the, uh, from, uh, the application itself. And we will simulate uh, the uh, sending messages uh, just in a second. The other interesting components you can see here is so here we have one stack that creates the Neptune database instance, as well as uh, some other components for for analyzing it. But we also have uh, the stack that created the uh, time stream uh, database, uh, so it's all there. All right, so let's first send in some messages. So I'm switching over to my uh, terminal session in here. Uh, so uh, you, uh, in in the uh, GitHub repository uh, uh, that I showed you before, uh, there's also a Python script that allows you to send in some uh, randomized messages. So let me just uh, uh, do that. So uh, clear here. So now you can see then various messages are being sent, a transaction from various accounts. Uh, so if you take a closer look of some of those accounts here in the middle, in uh, some emails and trans uh, transaction values. 
All right, let's now take a look at whether the, uh, the transactions are being actually written into the time stream table. So from that perspective, I'm switching over to the console uh, for uh, time stream. Uh, you can see there are a couple of tables uh, in this uh, scenario being created. Uh, the main thing we want to take a look at is the transaction table down here. So what I can do is uh, I'm uh, 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 taking a look into previewing the data, preview, which uh, will generate the uh, querying it. Uh, I hit the button one. And uh, that basically now should uh, run it. As we can see, there are uh, certain transactions in there. So with the account number, uh, which merchant it was going to, what was the volume, uh, and some additional information about the account holder. Uh, as uh, we say, uh, said, uh, this is a scenario where you want to identify uh, financial transaction fraud. Uh, so how does that work? So let's take a look at it uh, into uh, schedule queries. Here we can see there are two schedule queries being deployed. Uh, one is called the schedule query for frequent aggregation. So those uh, the schedule query will identify uh, transactions with uh, high frequency. And then we have another one with the high volumes. So let's take a look if those are actually uh, aggregating something. So I'm going into uh, uh, this information in here when I'm seeing the, uh, the this schedule query was actually running. And also, uh, it has ingested uh, about 239 different uh, uh, different records in there. All right, like, let's take a look into those. I'm going back to the query editor. And here in the query editor, I wanted to see what those frequent transactions are. I go back into the preview data part, which uh, will give me the latest 10 records. And I can, uh, if I'm running the query, I am actually should see uh, there are uh, certain account numbers being identified uh, that had uh, a high transaction uh, uh, value uh, volume. So within five minutes, we saw 58 transactions for this. So which certainly identifies there's a fault. And we can do the same thing with the other uh, transaction table. Uh, aggregation, which shows the data of uh, transactions that had very high values. So I'm going into the high value there, uh, running the uh, transaction uh, uh, query. And here I'm seeing I found uh, certain account numbers that had uh, transaction volume amounts of about 4 million. Oh, that's some, some a good one. All right, and you can see 23 for there, 20, uh, and then a few, few transactions. All right, let's now take a look into uh, how would those uh, accounts relate to other accounts. So from that perspective, I want to switch over to the uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, that, did the, that, that allows us to run graph queries. And this point, we want to do uh, gremlin queries. Uh, so here you can see that as a notebook. So, uh, so first, let's see if the uh, connectivity uh, works. I'm stepping uh, one by one. So let's run this first step. Okay, yeah, we have con uh, the visualization completely set. Uh, let's start just previewing the graph. I'm running the graph here. So I should see uh, within a second. Oh, yeah, I have. Uh, uh, a certain amount of records in there. Well, I have 100 phone numbers. I have 99 accounts in there. 10,000 transactions have been already being put in the place. So that's a good value to uh, to look into. Uh, and other queries so to, to group it into uh, uh, in some of the attributes. Do those transactions or those accounts actually have phone and, the, and those things. All right, let's now run the fault analysis. As you uh, remember from the uh, previous uh, screen, if I'm going back here, uh, the account we might be interested in is the account 23. So I'm going back here. Uh, what I will do is uh, uh, just for this particular part there, let's replace the account number with 23. And let's run the analysis of saying, well, uh, which one, uh, which other accounts are actually related to? Uh, so uh, now I'm getting uh, uh, the 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 uh, graph result here. So for this account number 23, 
uh, if I'm uh, starting to scroll to the left, I get a lot of more information in here. Uh, are there uh, some uh, relationship to other graphs in the I'm seeing, okay, I have uh, in direction uh, to out direction. Uh, so uh, 23 is being related to uh, other accounts and you can see all of those details there. And certainly you can, as you see, the 23 is related to accounts 20, 24, 26, uh, uh, and those things. So you can certainly see if I'm finding a pattern of multiple accounts being being related to each other, uh, uh, that's going on. All right, uh, this is all about the demo I wanted to show. So you're certainly able to run the demo yourself. And let me just uh, start switch over to show you of uh, how you can get access to it. If you now want to try the solution for yourself, we have published uh, the fraud detection solution for transactional fraud on detection on AWS in our solutions guidance. So you find the link here down below, as well as the QR code. If you scan that one, you can, uh, it will get you to the same location there. So it contains both some of the description in here, as well as uh, the example code that you can deploy in your own account. If you have any additional information or want to have a time series use cases that you want to discuss, please feel free to get either hold of us from the go to market team or get help from our specialist team. So either of those emails will work for you. So this concludes the the video for today about fraudulent transaction detection in AWS. Reach out to us if you have any questions and thanks for watching it.